Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and in today's journey through the star map, we're heading back into Xi'an territory to check out Kefa. Kefa was first discovered by a couple of UEE pilots named Ahmed Harar and Carl Dyson after finding a gravitational anomaly back in 2617. This duo had some thoughts of kind of becoming famous, and instead of actually reporting back to their commanders to have an official Pathfinder mission sent, they ended up following the anomaly into Kefa. Now that ended up being a pretty dangerous decision as we discovered the Xi'an in the system, who were in, we were in the middle of this cold war with, um, and they were ready to attack any outsiders that came through. So that when they jumped in, it ended up creating a big enough of a wake that the Xi'an picked them up on their displays, hauled ass over to that location, blasted both of the pilots with an EMP, which totally disabled their ships, and then they were taken into custody. So the two of them deciding to jump in on their own may have been a bit foolish, but there's a really good chance that that actually prevented an all-out interspecies war, compared to having a larger Pathfinder mission coming through with a lot more ships. So three days the, these pilots were interrogated while their ships were studied and had their weapons removed, um, and that was all on board a large military vessel. But eventually the Xi'an captors decided that they believed the stories of Harar and Dyson, and th that no one else knew where this jump point was. So they ended up being escorted back to the jump point and sent through with the message that any further intrusions into this system would result in an immediate attack from the local Xi'an. Eventually, after that Cold War ended, though, the GN finally offered up more information on this system. And we had our first welcomed visitor, Imperator Toy, uh, who entered the system, and he got a tour of the second planet in orbit around the K-type dwarf star. This is where we learned about the Xi'an belief system of Litova, which is a moral and spiritual belief system that's held by a lot of the Xi'an, and it's really focused on peace and tranquility. Eventually, though, through positive relationships being built, the guard came down and humans and GN were able to travel to and from each other's territories without, you know, concerned about being EMP'd and hauled into, you know, GN jail. But getting onto the planets, Kefa 1 is a rocky world with a primarily carbon atmosphere that gives it this black and red type of appearance when looking at it, almost like a small gas giant. Um, based on the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, there's an interesting theory and possibility that the planet could have massive amounts of diamond deposits. But here's the catch. The GN don't allow any mining here, so you're not allowed to find out, at least legally. Kefa 2 is the holy planet in the system, and it's known as Tovara, or Tavora, Tovara, something like that. Uh, and there may be military systems, and there may be government centers, but Tovara is the home of religious beliefs of the GN. And what makes this place really interesting, at least astronomically, is that one day on the planet lasts about 128 standard Earth days, thanks to the orbit and rotation of the planet. The planet is covered in gardens and fields and a bunch of pretty stuff, basically with temples all over the place, regardless of what direction that you're looking in. Uh, and all of these temples, um, there's, it's just covered with a bunch of monks, uh, Xi'an monks, that are really trying to reach the highest level of enlightenment and are constantly meditating about life and peace. Now, there's only one city on this planet called Sushora, and even then, the number of living people, or Jian here, is really small, mostly just religious and government officials. Now, with this, it makes me wonder, you know, you've got a, you've got a planet that rotates 128 days, you've got one plant, or one city, so unless that city's positioned perfectly, there could also be 128 days of night. So, I'm not really sure how that's going to work, it'll be interesting to see where that city's actually placed. Nowadays, though, you're welcome to come in and visit, and there are customs here that you need to follow. Just because you're a human doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. And like one person mentioned in the article, they wore leather shoes, and they ended up getting these dirty looks from priests, and ended up having to go buy some flip-flops. Now, humans must also stay within the city limits here, and I don't know if that's because it's dangerous outside of there, or there's weird GN secrets, but you're not allowed to leave the city limits legally. Some good news, though, is for those of you that are interested in trading, um, that based on the religious beliefs and focus on this planet, they don't manufacture anything here. So you could very easily make good money hauling the goods needed to a relatively dependent planet. Now, the only export from this planet is the Centennial Bloom. However, they don't like the idea of humans making a profit off of these plants, because it almost became part of a, relig a religious pilgrimage for the Xi'an. So they base the cost on on that plant to whatever the value is currently in the UEE, which basically means that getting one here is really only a guarantee of authenticity, not necessarily that you're getting a good deal. There are some black market dealings here, but they're severely frowned upon and the punishments are equally severe. Kefa 3 is a gas dwarf that had the potential for platform-based colonies, similar to what we're going to see on Crusader. 
However, the Xi'an Emperor Cray outlawed the idea over concerns about what it may end up doing to traffic and kind of causing disruptions around the, sit, uh, around the system and really hampering the tranquility that you're going to find on Tavora. Kefa 4 is actually another gas dwarf that's so close to the other one that the leading scientific studies out there um, almost think that there's some sort of cosmic event that caused this planet to split into two, creating basically two very similar planets. So that's the gist of the Kefa system. Um, I think it's going to be a cool sightseeing location, something that you probably want to go check out as a tourist. Um, but as far as money making goes here, importing goods is probably going to be your best bet. Now it is a tourist destination, so we could think outside the box a little bit and say bringing in fuel here to help sell to people before they get on their way, especially since I'm not sure if you can actually fuel off at a gas dwarf or not, is probably a fairly safe bet on a way that you could make some money here. Now you could also potentially set up a merchant man shop with some legal or illegal goods here, or if you really want to get ballsy, you could maybe check out Kefa 1 for those diamonds. Outside of that though, I'm having a hard time seeing where the money making is. So if you guys have some money making ideas, put them in the comments because I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. But that's going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for a whole lot more content coming at you soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.